It's seven o'clock. Do you know where your freedom is? Coming to you live and electrified from Studio A, high atop the escarpments of Whitetail Peak, the roof, ruff, ruff, of the American Hindu Kush. This is Dr. Amp doing the vamp for liberty, climbing the ramp to justice, and lighting the lamp of freedom. So, what's on your mind tonight? I mean, you know I'm going to tell you what's on mine. It's full day. Yeah, it was stressful. <laughs> uh, I, thought I just had uh, a smoke there. Uh, but I've kept half of it, so yeah, we could stop or I'll see. I might end up with a good high that just takes me on throughout the full show. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, but yeah, my, my, my day was okay. How was yours? Yeah, it was, it was mostly all right. It's been raining. As someone who lives in Scotland, you, you would probably uh, appreciate the it's been raining for two and a half days. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, What's that, summer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're close to Canada. Like, across mm-hmm. across one of the Great Lakes is Canada. Uh, if that if that helps you. <laughs> slightly. Just ever so slightly. We we had a bit of a, a kind of heat spell last week, and it was, like, the hottest Scotland has ever been at this particular time of year. And we're all in lockdown, and no one can go out, and no one can enjoy it. And it's just like, just like the earth is punishing us. Like, stay in and look at what you've done. And I'll be yeah, sunny. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that's the rub, that's the rubbed face right there. Right yeah, there, man. Right in the piss. And you've been doing right. You've been listening to the scientists and uh, yeah. stuff. But some of my country people have definitely been not. What is going on? <laughs> like, every time I see what's happening... Over there, I'm like, is this real? Yeah. Is this a really, really <laughs> cheesy movie that we're in? Because this is... Nobody nobody can really believe in even 90% of what they're, they're saying. I mean, if you want to run some of the more wild things past you, I can probably confirm or deny. The people running into the state house legislature with guns, demanding to talk to the governor and not getting arrested... <sighs> It's fucking crazy, man. That was, uh, that was, what do they call it? Uh, Ohio and Michigan has a lot of sports rivalries. So I think they call mm. it that, that place up there or something like that. Or I don't know. It's weird. But uh, they're, they're just, uh, we, we share like a northern, northern, southern border. They're like up and to the left on the map. <laughs> <laughs> and. I hope you've not been injecting yourself with any detergent or bleach. I thought you were supposed to stick it up your ass. Was that just the UV lights? I'm just. I think that was the UV ones. Yeah. I've been lubing up the UV lights with bleach, and (laughs) chewing charcoal tablets and uh, what's it called? (laughs) Hydroxychloroquine. (laughs) That uh, yeah. (laughs) But do it all that. Honestly, man, I wouldn't let that man be in charge of a. my, my car in a video game, let alone a country. That man is an idiot. Yeah, I mean, one of the uh, frustrating. I don't. That's not even the right word. But he said he would run the country like his business. And the people who don't know what the fuck that that means were like, "Yay, that's awesome!" And the people that know what that means, that means he figured out how to bankrupt a casino. He's, you know, his his charity got shut down and his children had to take classes on how to not steal from like cancer patients. I think the the issue is he's always been bailed out by the government and now he's the government. Uh, Terrifying. It's fucking terrifying. And it's, yeah, the weird electoral politics. I, I have it's it's a futile point to make, but. He did get f- three million fewer votes than one, than his next opponent. It's just the goddamn electoral college got set up to appease the slave states, 
back in the day. And it's you, just still there. America's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but uh, here in Columbus, uh, they allowed bars to reopen their patio service. If they followed the... Shit, I can't remember how many meters six feet is. I figured it out, I think, the last time we talked, and I've already forgotten it. But, you know, six feet apart, nobody touch each other, this and that and the other thing. And then there's, like, fucking people show up without masks. Fucking hell, man. It's, you know, the anti-vaxxers and the flat earthers are Voltroning with the (laughs) coronas of of a hoax by Bill Gates to put microchips in us. (laughs) And it's... It's the end. I, I, I think I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start uh, <laughs> doing soft applications for uh, refugee status. I think pretty soon. I'll be. You know. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, it's that's all that's needed now because we just aren't handling it well, and people are. We Scotland are now. They're still sticking to the restrictions. Uh, quite well whereas England have obviously started to come out of them uh, but Scotland Wales and Ireland uh, are saying that like by the end of the month we'll be able to start like maybe visiting a lot of people and as long as you're still socially distancing and more people can go can go back to work but when you say that in Scotland or the UK it, people just hear right that's it you can go back to normal nobody's going to keep social distance they're just going to go just is that as if everything is back to how it used to be handshakes hugging just it, it it's going to be absolutely awful when it all hits the fan again it's yeah terrifying that's i've been uh looking for i i feel weird this, this is this is one of those tragedies that i feel weird if i don't mock it in the right way or mock things about it in the right way but i've been looking at all the 1918 flu public health posters thinking of ways to yeah. adjust them for now and i just looking at the statistics and things from that i mean there was a fucking anti-mask league in san francisco back then that was trying to get everybody to stop wearing masks because it keeps the germs inside you and other dumb fucking shit dumb people <laughs> say and it's sad that it's not just you know america can sort of not be excused but reasoned that years and years of defunding public education and making higher education debt riddeningly expensive, you're going to have a lot of more dumb people. Yeah. But people are doing dumb everywhere. And it's, I got salty as fuck about it today. Uh, somebody was talking about, I refuse to live in fear. Uh, <laughs> Dot 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 it, of being considerate of other people around me. I don't know. Yeah, I'm having my second it, drink in like a month right now. Oh really? What are you having? I'm having uh some some vodka. Ah, I, that's, nice. That's what I've. That's apparently what I got last time I went to the liquor store. I, <laughs> uh, I haven't really seen that as an essential thing. While I can still get my hands on other items like they didn't they didn't let the marijuana dispensaries close because since it's medicinal it's medical and you don't that's need, a relief yeah you don't need a lot of <laughs> ppe to go to the dispensary yeah i've got paper i've got paper laying around i've got a lot of fucking crayons uh my wind chimes are going i am the mariner i mean <laughs> My basement is a little flooded right now because this neighborhood always floods. Uh, so, uh, but it's it's not as bad as Waterworld yet. Uh, we we will continue the way we con- we converse. Uh, but anybody that's still listening at this point, or if you're just now joining us, I am here with Liam Rafferty, one half of Scott and Liam versus Evil. And uh, one half of many other things, and all of others. Um, <laughs> how are you doing, man? It's been uh, shit. It's almost been two months since we recorded together last. Oh really? I thought it was like a month. But this lockdown is—I'm I, I, just in my own bubble. I have no concept of time. 
I have no concept of anything to be honest I just roam around in my shorts and a vest and a headband on because I can't cut my hair grow my beard out I'm like Tom Hanks and Castaway <laughs> in my house <laughs> oh there's going to be some fun photoshops for later <laughs> I can't wait, actually. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, you know, weathering weathering the storm, brother, as they say. Uh, just, yeah, sitting here in my my recording. I've been playing a lot more drums, I think, since we last spoke. Nice. Uh, so I've made sure that I built my little semi-soundproof room out in my car park. Uh, big enough for my drum set. And it's big okay. enough for my table and my electric kit to fit in the room at the same time. So that's pretty much what I've been doing. But there was a raccoon invasion upstairs, <laughs> up, up above. Uh, they figured out how to get into the garage. And you know, motherfucker took a big shit, like, on top of my room. And <laughs> it was really annoying. I, wa- I walked in yesterday. I was like, it's, you know, something smells different. <laughs> and I just got the ladder out and I climbed and I looked. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> but luckily we're in a pandemic. So, you know, I went and I got the thick rubber gloves and I cleaned it, cleaned it up and put a bunch of stuff on top of it to block off access as far as I know. And, ah. uh, and then I read that it's really dangerous to clean it up. So you have to be really careful. But it's said to do all the stuff that I did, basically. <laughs> so we, we don't have raccoons here. So that's that story is crazy because I'm like, a raccoon? How can you have a raccoon? They're just cartoon characters. <laughs> oh, dude, I've got another raccoon story for you. Oh, really? Uh, when, I, when I was working at, uh, right after college, I was working at this um, grocery store in in, yeah. the, in the pizza shop there, and it was back by the wine the wine section and the deli. Late one night, I just heard people screaming, so I thought there was a robbery because it's America. There's guns everywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's a relatively nice neighborhood, but that doesn't mean anything. There's so many, I I you know I don't even want to know how many guns are around me right now. But anyway, a bunch of people were screaming. And then you sort of see above the aisles, you know, a little bit of commotion. A raccoon uh, had got in through the loading dock and it ran <laughs> onto the, the butcher, the butcher counter, those glass cases. It had a bottle of wine that it had grabbed from the rack across <laughs> the aisle. And then it threw it at one of the people chasing them. And then it ran and jumped onto the wine again and knocked a whole bunch of bottles down. And then ran past me and out the front door. That is amazing. <laughs> it was it was a wild night. <laughs> that that is crazy. So are they do do they just roam around your garden? I mean, they're you usually only see them at night. They're nocturnal. Yeah. Raccoons will you know uh, fuck up people's dogs. They're little bastards. Yeah, I'd be terrified if there were raccoons running around. Because every time I see a little furry animal in my garden, I'm like, I'm going to try and feed that. Even if I even if I know it does not want fed, whatever the animal is, it's staring at me from across the garden with eyes full of hatred, burning hatred. And I'm like, I think I know that that wants a little bit of cheese. Yeah. Well, and you're a cat person. Raccoons are kind of like cats with the thumbs. Oh, no. That, if cats had thumbs, we would all be dead. <laughs> Yeah, they probably know how to use tools. Um, there's not, there's not been a good raccoon horror film. Oh, like the birds, but with raccoons. Yeah. But you got to come up with, especially with this being in America, you can't just call it the coons. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, unless you do a really good job on the cover art, making it obvious <laughs> you're not making a Donald Trump campaign video. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Waterworld. <laughs> Waterworld. So this is 1995, I believe it came out here in the States. Yeah, I think it was the same in the UK. It did not make much of a splash. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it almost sunk Kevin Costner's career. <laughs> this is a summer blockbuster. I mean, what what's his name? Uh, Joss Whedon has a writing credit on this movie. All-star cast of Kevin Costner, the girl from Napoleon Dynamite, Dennis Hopper, <laughs> Jack Black, Robert Joy, uh, what, Kim Coates is a weird, oh, you said it's right, you got paper. Oh, did you do? <laughs> give me the, I'm a I know. Dude. What is that accent? It's like a like, shitty American to be? version of an Irish accent, I He's quite good at accents usually. Like he's he's usually on the ball. Maybe maybe it was an experiment. I I feel like I read somewhere that Costner dabbled in direct co-directing the film, but since they had what all those different hodgepodge languages with like Gre- Greco-German or something that the one guy was speaking uh, and stuff. So maybe it was just okay. You're Canadian. Do an impression of an American doing an Irish accent, and act real twitchy, like you've been in the sun for a while. And uh, I think I think that's where that's where that came from. That was a somewhat stressful scene when you hadn't seen the movie in a while, because Kevin Costner is such a fucking asshole in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Costner, literally pimp. Pimps a woman out immediately. As soon as he's offered something, he's like, "Yeah, take her." When you go, <laughs> just a half hour. Yeah, what what a absolute dish. <laughs> <laughs> and that's after what? Uh, maybe maybe in the movie, an hour's worth of time of him being like, "I just need to throw you overboard." <laughs> At least the fucking kid. <laughs> At the very least, the kid. Okay. He, he, he hits her way more than it's, it's meant to be a bit of a kind of romance there but it never actually leads to anything apart from he just throws her about the place like a ragdoll yeah, he beats her up uh, the side of the fucking head with the oar uh, would he be a misogynist though if he's not because he's actually half fish so would he be a fish fishogynist fishogynist uh, fishogynist Fishogyny. Fishogyny. That, is he, that's is he practicing fishogyny? <laughs> Possibly. That's what that's what uh, the the creepy dude from Sons of Anarchy does when he's alone. Oh yeah. And I feel like I saw Ron Howard, but he never showed his face. You know, it was just that bald head, and sounded like his voice. I don't know if you got a lot of Ron Howard over there. Nah, or, no, no. Uh, Clint, oh, obviously, Clint I'm... Howard. Ron oh, Howard's Clint... brother. Yeah. Uh, oh well, yeah. With uh, what's the ice cream man? Yeah, ice cream man, the very uh, old old dude from Rock and Roll High School. Yeah, and obviously, Evil Speak, the greatest film in the history of all cinema. Big well, up, Clint Howard, if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening, dude. Um, I think he was in Luther the Geek, if I remember correctly. Uh, was he? Yeah, I think he was. So he was. Uh, but that that was one of the movies that my my big sister used to rent when she had sleepovers and shit. But yeah, Ro- Robert Joy from what Land of the Dead, among other things. Yeah. Uh, the Dark Half. But yeah, a really cool guy. I I I think we've said before in past conversations on record. I think we've said that. We're both fans of this movie. I think we can just say it out loud already. Oh yeah, it's it's there's no build up to it, and <laughs> I mean if you've listened to this show before, I don't think I've done a movie that I don't really like. That's kind of the freedom of being a, a one man island. <laughs> if anyone follows me on social media, they'll see that I watch this like once every two months, and then I can't stop watching it for like a week solid. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I honestly love this film. It's just, it's, it was such a massive part of my childhood. Like, I remember it so vividly from then. And it's just never lost its magic. No matter how many issues it has and how many things people point out, I can't see them. 
Like I'm so blind to them, and I have so much fun with it every time I turn it on. I don't watch this as often as you do, but uh, I believe I had said that uh, a couple weeks ago, and I, I misunderstood the conversation that I had with my wife, but it worked out fine. She had never seen it before, but she was interested in seeing it. She wasn't concerned that we didn't have it. She just uh, wanted to watch it. Uh-huh. She watched the whole thing, and I offered to turn it off for her quite a few times, but she thought it was too long and really dumb. Did you watch the Ulysses cut or the theatrical? Uh, what one's over two hours long? Like the... the- yeah, yeah, the Ulysses cut is the it's like two hours fifty seven minutes. I think that's the one we watched. Yeah, I, I can check. Uh, do you have the theatrical? No, no, I have I have them all. I I, I own this one. <laughs> have I, them I, all. How many? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many versions I, are there? I I have two versions of it in DVD. I don't know why, because they are both the exact same. Uh, I've got the. Just standard Blu-ray release, and then I've got the Arrow, the collection one that came out with the the extended cut. So that had all like the TV episodes of it, or oh sorry, all the, the stuff that was put in extra for the TV uh, screenings of it. That kind of combined it all together uh, in in a Blu-ray transfer, and it doesn't really add anything much to the story. I suppose it's still good to see. And some of the effects don't hold up because obviously the scenes weren't polished a lot because it was just for the TV cut. So when you watch it now, it's like, well, Kevin Costner's not actually on that boat at that part. <laughs> <laughs> but These are not them. You've captured their stunt doubles. Search the area. Their stunt doubles. <laughs> three hours in Waterworld is I'm absolutely fine with that if they said that they'd found three hours of extra footage and released a six hour cut I would watch all six hours of that as well <laughs> I was trying to look at it from a skeptical point of view I was trying to figure out how the smokers had so much gas yeah. uh, but we don't really know how long and we don't know how many times they've switched ships. I feel like the Exxon, the Exxon Valdez was their main ship, and that's that's its own kind of fun. I don't know if you're familiar with the name of that ship or the captain. I, I, I never was, obviously, until, like, probably about maybe 12 watches ago, and I then thought, oh, I wonder what that is, <laughs> and I Googled it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I get it now. But before... Like, when I used to watch it as a kid and stuff, I, I wouldn't even read that. Like, that didn't bother me. That wasn't a, a significant part of the film at all. And neither was the, the end reveal. When I was a kid, I was just like, oh, oh, water. <laughs> Land is water. Amazing, brilliant, fun. <laughs> Fresh water. Yeah. But, yeah, for for, for the youngins, uh, Captain Joseph Hazelwood was the captain of the Exxon Valdez, which had a a, uh, for the time, it was a huge oil spill. Uh, capitalism has since found ways to top itself in uh, environmental <laughs> destruction. But they said he was drunk and he crashed the boat. That was basically the whole story forever. And then uh, a year or two later, after his life was basically destroyed, it was found that he was... Probably not drunk and just had an accident, which the Deacon of the D's or Dennis Hopper, as he will probably be most often referred to as in this discussion, somehow has a I don't know if he has a past knowledge of the boat crash or when he says something about after decades of disgrace I, I I kind of feel like he's probably Dennis Hopper is probably referring to himself. But yeah. There's that double meaning, but it, it seems like the ice caps melted at least a few generations ago because Kevin Costner is the only person that knows that there's civilization is under the water. But 
that I, I think if you then look at it under a microscope, which you shouldn't because it does not hold up, <laughs> uh, that's like if it did happen generations ago, then how come the the crayons and the, the, the kind of paint markers and stuff, how come they all still work? And if Kevin Costner is like the evolution, possibly, of like now that water covers everything, humanity is fucked, so the, the species has to evolve. They've got gills, so it's like Kevin Costner. So humanity's going and Kevin Costner... Uh, if, if he's the evolution, then how come there's still like kids and how come there's still other humans that are younger than him that don't have the mutation and he's way older than them all? And it just doesn't make sense at all. Like if it was if it was any other film, you would watch it and go, "That is nonsense. That is absolute bullshit." And I'm not buying that. But in Waterworld, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there was a decent amount of time where. Uh... The two different species or whatever of human coexisted back, what, with Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, if that's the same uh, classification uh, level. I feel like there was a while that they, they both existed and then one died out. No. And like Historically, it's relatively quick, but I think in perspective of human life, I feel like it was a decent amount of time. But I, of course, did no research into that. One of the cool things about this show is we have no idea where the conversation is going to (laughs) go. But, yeah, why are the magazines not worn out? They don't seem to have very good uh, document protection. Salt water is a bitch when it comes to that sort of thing. Uh, But, yeah, the crayons. (laughs) I I like the Enola. Uh, it's like what, Mister Alucard, from Monster Squad. <laughs> yeah. Just say her name backwards. What does it say? <laughs> She's alone. The girl from Napoleon Dynamite's alone. <laughs> and the map. Oh, they can't work it out. Years, years they've tried to work out the map, and it clearly points to the peak of a mountain. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> <laughs> the map can be solved in seconds. We've been looking at it for so long, we never thought about flipping it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but see, because it's such an a, a adrenaline-filled action ride, like it, all that other stuff doesn't matter. Nope. It's a sci-fi film that literally does not attempt to go into any science. <laughs> Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's just Mad bonkers. Max on the water, and it, 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 retrospectively, Kevin. Co- I will say, Mad Max is a better movie, or Road Warrior, more specifically in comparison to this. But Mad Max is a better movie. Well, Mad Max and Road Warrior are better than this. Oh no, no, no. no. What about oh, Road no. Warrior? Which this no. is no, no. Okay, in I'm going. How about right, if I say? I'm going to stop right now. You could you could name every film. <laughs> I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay. But would you say out of that, what is it, a quadrigy now? Uh, Road Warrior is the most comparable to this movie. There's the jet skis instead of the motorcycles. There's the outposts with Dennis, Lord Humongous, Hopper. Uh, but instead of, <laughs> instead of a hockey mask, uh, he's wearing... What, a burnt pair of swimming goggles at first and then a <laughs> chin strap? Which I love. You know, sometimes apocal- uh, apocalyptic dystopian societies have too many things that you know they don't make anymore. Yeah. He wouldn't find an eye patch. If, if he didn't find it on the Exxon Valdez, he didn't find an eye patch anywhere. So he improvised. Dennis Hopper, like this is actually Dennis Hopper's film because he chews up the scenery in every scene he's in. Oh yeah, better not ruin my short game. That's... And he can play this. He can play the same villain. He can play the same character, and it still feels different and fresh every time he does it. Yeah, this one I found kind of uh, kind of similar to the way he played uh, the guy in Speed. Mm-hmm. You know, like angry and hyper and 
re- ready to hurt people. And I, I, you couldn't have done it. He was too old to play the hero, but he's obviously a better actor than Kevin Costner. Yeah. Uh, I forget. Have you seen The Postman? Yeah, I have. You have. Yeah. I haven't seen it recently, but um, do you do double features? I know. No. The Postman, my, my one and only watch was... <laughs> I can't even remember. Like, okay. easy 15 years ago. A long, long time ago. I went through... When I really started to get into Waterworld, I went through about a Kevin Costner phase, and quite quickly I realised that it's not Kevin Costner I like, it's just Waterworld. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't you don't sit around watching Field of Dreams. Uh, <laughs> no, although do you know what I do? I actually have a soft spot for Field of Dreams. You do, which is strange. Yeah, and I, I don't know why, because I, I don't think it's a good movie at all. But there's just certain bits of it that that warm my cockles. <laughs> I think my my go to uh, baseball movies are League of Their Own and uh, Major League. Is that is Major League the one with Charlie Sheen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. Well, he was also in what Bull Durham. That's yeah. that's a good baseball movie. Because we don't have baseball over here, really. It's like a lot of those films are kind of lost on us. Not that we don't understand the concept of baseball <laughs> and the game <laughs> of baseball, but because it's just not massive in our culture, it's. He's like, oh, here's Kevin Costner again. Wonder what he's doing. Oh, something Americana. Is it Mr. Brook? Mr. Brooks? In what? Wait, and is it Mr. Brooks? Where he plays like the kind of uh, the serial killer? Oh, you know, I'm I'm not a big Kevin Costner aficionado. I'm sure it's Mr. Brooks. It kind of well in my head it came out around the same time as uh, one hour photo. With Robin Williams, but uh-huh. obviously you could IMDb that, and they they have came out like ten years apart. I don't know. It's just in my in my head. <laughs> They're the same the same time. He he was a good Elliot Ness. Yeah, he was. He was. And I I mean he had that that stretch, you know, Waterworld, Tin Cup, Postman, thirty the three thousand miles to Graceland. What was the last thing he was in that was big? Because I don't remember seeing him. Uh, what's the... 2019, The Highwayman? Oh, shit, yeah, the of course. Hidden Figures got, got a lot of Oscars in 2016. Um, yeah, it turns out he's being lost. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I only care about Waterworld. I really... I'm obviously not a Kevin Costner fan at all. If I... I thought he stopped it acting in like 2002 <laughs> <laughs> or whenever one of our photo and Mr. Brook or Mr. Brooks or Mr. Brookside I can't remember what it's called it, ha- it has to be that I've- I can't have made this up if I've made this up I really need to stop drinking and smoking and do it Mr. Brooks oh, you found 2007 it? yeah a well respected businessman is sometimes controlled by his murder and mayhem loving alter ego so there you go. A little bit of kind of Jekyll and Hyde for you there. There we go. That'll probably be shorter when when played back to make us sound smarter. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew all that off the top of my head because I am a fountain of knowledge. There was no, no looking it up. But uh, I think our, our original point before the meandering was you agree that this movie is better than any of the Mad Max movies, but much like the Mad Max movies, this is this movie had to have been a stunt person's fucking wet dream. Oh, uh, yeah. Can you not Im- imagine how much fun it would be to make this film? Right. Have you ever done the, 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 st- the stunt show? <laughs> uh, at Universal, the, the Waterworld stunt show? I no the the last time I went to any of the Disney places was as a little little kid before this movie came out. Ah, uh, well, we what, um, maybe it was Universal Hollywood, I think, possibly. You would know better than I. I've seen some pictures from it. 
it, it could have been in both parts. But anyway, when when they're they're doing the show and they're just diving off this giant set into turquoise, God, it just looks the water it looks so lovely, and they're just diving in it, and you're like, that looks like the, the funnest job, and and ever and. Uh, I grew up wanting to be a stuntman because of that. <laughs> I was like, this is such a fun movie. Imagine you just dive through the air and the water, and that's your job. Crazy. Yeah, that, that would be fun. You know, water skiing up giant ramps, being dragged by a biplane to <laughs> siege the city. Uh, what, smoking? I think they were smoking Black Death cigarettes, which I remember <laughs> seeing available for purchase back when i used to smoke oh really yeah uh i thought they were a joke brand but they they possibly were created from the movie or trying to make money back uh Uh, i can't remember what shows i had seen at universal and stuff like that here um there is a outdoor sort of stunt show it's maybe an hour or two south of here there's a tribe that puts on a stunt show type play about a native american shawnee chief or warrior named tecumseh who right. who uh it's been a really fucking long time since i've gone to that but they would put on a play of some story of him down where his tribe used to live my sister was in the girl scouts and I got dragged along to one of their field trips. I went to that. It's a relatively boring story. But Waterworld... <laughs> not boring at all. Not Three boring. hours of yeah. unadulterated mayhem. I, I mean, the, there's some really cool big shots of him with his Rube Goldberg machine boat that is pedaling the, the, the bicycle pedals with your hands and it makes all the shit swing around and... It does help him drop the sail on the the lady so he can hit her with the stick. And another thing you don't really want to examine, unless you want to imagine one of those multiverse sort of situations, but with everything being water, and like the guy that stole his limes at the beginning of the movie said, there was a, a place eight days to the east. So places are spread out and Dennis Hopper's ship looks like it's very stationary. Although they do, (laughs) they do have that part where he gets everybody psyched up and they get out the, the Jason and the Argonauts giant oars. (laughs) And he says, you know, those, those guys will be rowing for two months before they find out. (laughs) I don't know what I'm talking about, (laughs) but how many Dennis Hoppers do you think there are in Waterworld? Mm. That's the beauty of the film, though, isn't it? The, like, you, you don't know, you don't really understand how they got there. You don't understand out with what you're seeing. Just enjoy and don't try and, don't try and ex- explain it further. That's the fun for me, because it, it means I can just shut my brain off and just watch Kevin Costner in the first scene of a film piss into a cup. And then drink it. And then spit some onto his, his lime. Just so you know. That's how he gets his vitamin C. That's how he gets his water. I've never seen Sylvester Stallone or Arnold Schwarzenegger or Bruce Willis or Steven Seagal start a film by pissing in a cup and drinking it. <laughs> they might do it in the comfort of their own homes and that's okay. But they have never done it on film. Uh, that could be a Kevin Costner record along with how many times he's just shown his ass. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it sets up the world. I mean, it starts with the Universal uh, Studios logo. Uh, of course, they wait until it's over North America before they really show the effects of all the ice caps melting. <laughs> and then that voice comes in, and I should have written down what it said. I mean, it was like, The future. The polar ice caps have melted, covering the earth with water. Those who survived have adapted to a new world. In the year 2000, blah, 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 the 
ice caps melted. Uh, yeah, so I'm probably going to cut that in right there. Then, yeah, there's Kevin Costner pissing in a cup, running it through his little <laughs> filter machine that he's that he's developed over time, which, and I don't really know how gills work. I know they they process oxygen, but you would almost think that being uh, the mutation that he has to be amphibious, he might not need to consume water as much as regular people. So he, it could be said, just likes to drink piss, yeah. which I've never thought about until right now. That's not in any of my little notes that I jotted down. I've got, well, I do have piss drinking, lime theft, <laughs> and when two drifters meet. Uh, so when two drifters meet, something must that be. That is a extreme. great name for, that's a great name for an album. When two drifters meet. Piss drinks. Lane theft, <laughs> and when two drifters meet. There we go. By the smokers. Yeah. It sets up the, the stakes, sort of. You know, there's Kevin Costner. He's by himself. He doesn't like people who talk. He likes to listen to the sound of the world. And then Dennis Hopper has his roving gang of former Universal Studios stunt people <laughs> from... <laughs> the Indiana Jones thing and from Waterworld. <laughs> they can jump jet skis. They uh, they do not take hoses very well. There's the, the pig mask guy with the giant fucking gun. Uh, that might have been Jack Black. I don't know. Yeah, don't yeah, it's Jack Black. Okay. <laughs> and they just blow shit to shit. And I, I, I feel like Dennis Hopper blames Kevin Costner, who, what, they just call him the Mariner? I don't think he's referred to as anything else. No, at, at the end of, they, they yeah. probably called Stranger somewhere. At the end of the Ulysses cut, the Helen tries to, like, kind of give him the, the name Ulysses. Like, she tells him about the book and the story. And he says, oh, that's a nice name. And then it goes away in the, the camera it's like oh maybe he maybe he's now known as Ulysses but I don't like to think that's the case because that is a stupid name <laughs> yeah and, and luckily that boat was still there and uh in really good shape <laughs> although it couldn't couldn't have been there for too long because what Enola is what are we guessing 12 11 or 12 yeah so it's been there for at least 11 or 12 years uh, spoiler alert, her parents are dead. But then they don't really explain that either. It's just, things just happen in this film, you just have to accept it. Yep, she she knows, she's seen the horses, which, how long, how long do you think before they ate a horse? I know. Instantly. <laughs> well, if you could catch one. At Red Dead Redemption, I am awful at catching horses. I, I just, I, I got the, the horses that came with the game. <laughs> yeah, the, the, bo the bonus horses. <laughs> yeah, the bonus horses, that's it. I, th I think I might have caught one for a side mission, but at the most. You can't ever refer to yourself as a real cowboy if you only have bonus horses. <laughs> a true cowboy has, has real, real captured steeds. He's chased that horse up the mountain in the snow. <laughs> end up end up shooting the horse, killing it, yeah. having to go and try find another horse, just turning the game off because you're sick of this happening. <laughs> That's a game that I kind of stopped playing not too long after I beat it. Yeah. Although, Tony Hawk Pro Skater coming out <sighs> in a couple months. Oh, man. Did you see the trailer? Yes. Did you send me it? No. I don't know if I... I don't think I did. No, I, oh, I think man. I did post it in uh, in the psycho semantic group though. That's maybe where I, I can't remember if I saw it there or someone said me. But anyway, I I can't believe that's happening, and I can't believe how good it looks. That should be fun. I, although there's a, did you see there's a petition to keep trapped off the. Soundtrack? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna sign that shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, I, I saw it this morning. It was something like <laughs> trapped fucking sucks or trapped is weak ass shit or something like that. But there were, there were a, couple, a few thousand signatures when I saw it this morning. Well, they did say they're not. It's not going to be every single song from the playlist, so they probably will avoid stuff like like that because that's not what the Tony Hawk kind of gaming culture was at that time. Uh, so it would make sense to kick them off, and I don't think there's any Lost Profits songs on Tony Hawk <laughs> 1 or 2, but if there was, obviously, you wouldn't want that because the last thing you want is to be skating and realizing three minutes in that you're singing along to a Lost Prophet song. <laughs> now that will ruin any gaming experience for you. The Dead Kennedys will be there because yeah, that was like the whole thing behind the lawsuit against Jello Biafra was to be able to keep the <laughs> keep the songs in commercials and stuff. Uh, where did we... Okay, let, let me angle us back towards Waterworld. There's also a game coming out in a couple days called man eater or manhunter have you seen this no it looks like the jaws game that was on the ps2 where you're a shark and you just eat people and blow up boats and shit i never played that but i remember seeing like a i think it was a clickbait article about the game coming out okay. <laughs> yeah and i obviously clicked it because i am a sucker for click uh, clickbait <laughs> uh, but yeah was it good it looks it? it looks good. I'm tempted because it's I, I it's in the lower price range of video games of new games, which always makes me nervous at first. Why isn't this seventy dollars? Yeah. Uh, but it's it comes out I think the the twenty second this month, and it's around thirty or forty dollars American on the mm. PlayStation Four and the Xbox One and stuff, and it looks like you're a shark and you've got some sort of thing with a poacher who's getting followed by a reality TV show. And that's how the cut scenes, I guess are worked in, but you're a shark. It sounds like it, I'll, I'll send you the, the, the trailer. Yeah. Uh, sounds quite fun. It looks like it could be fun. I, I, I'd rather be a shark hunting a bunch of people than the other way around. Definitely. So sharks, Okay, there we go. I I don't know why I did not remember the part where he makes himself bait for the giant sea monster. <laughs> I totally forgot about that part. Or... It's because there's so many ridiculous bits that you actually for you imagine a film that there are so many scenes that make you forget that happens. <laughs> So he does that, and then he just blows up, kills the fish, or the sea. Well, let's call it uh, what? Kraken Junior. I mean, it's really fucking big. Yeah, that's the meat. He's got the barbecue going. There's the reduce, reuse, recycle pit where they just at any. It seems like no matter what you do, if you piss off a town elder, you're gonna get tossed into the compost. <laughs> There's the Wizard of Oz with his weird balloon that goes off at the wrong time. Uh, I really only remember him from the Green Mile. Yeah. I'm sure I've seen him in lots of things. I'm the exact same Green Mile. And uh, is it Mr... What What's the name of his mouse in the Green Mile? Oh, Mr. Jingles. Mr. Jingles. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's the... He has one of those faces that yeah, you know, like Danny Trejo, you know that everything you watch, there is a maybe a two-fifths chance that he's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Trejo. I think he just turned 70-something. Did you but... see he posted a photo of himself playing Animal Crossing and invited everyone to come to his island? Oh, really? Like, what? Yeah, what a guy. I don't play Animal Crossing, but I would play it just so I could visit Danny Trejo's island. I know. I almost got it when I found out that uh, Alexandria Casio cortez uh, visits people. And I don't, I don't, you might not know who she is. But no, I have no clue. <laughs> she's, she's like the, the rights boogeyman or boogity man or what, bogeyman. That's what you say, right? Bogey? Yeah, bogeyman. She won a seat in Congress. Uh, she's maybe 29. 
and right. she, she's all she's uh you know medicare for all you know public health care student debt reduction environment and right like okay that. what she's she's one of the good ones yeah you might have heard people talk about the squad it's like her and a uh, elon omar she's a muslim rep in the midwest so she's evil and it's just there's like five <laughs> of the young upstarts who are trying to bring America into modernity <laughs> and the, the Republican uh, party and a lot of people in the democratic party are trying to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she's wonderful politically. And I, you know, she's, she's fucking hot too. <laughs> just, you know, there was this thing when she first took office, they were going to destroy her. So they found video of her and her friends in college recreating a dance from the Breakfast Club movie. And they they released it on Twitter to destroy her. And it's it's just one of those things. I don't know. But she she she's on Animal Crossing and she visits people and shit. I was like, oh, I'm. Maybe I should get that. I like to think there's an island right now where she's sitting having a a coffee or a tea or whatever you drink in Animal Crossing with Danny Trejo. Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> Selling turnips or whatever the fuck they, they the... fucking do in that in that game. I was, I have no idea. Anytime I've ever watched anyone play it, they just shake trees and things fall out. That's it. That's all they do. <laughs> I'm, I'm still playing Resident Evil 7 and shitting myself. <laughs> uh, I've thought about getting that. I've got I, uh, I got the revamp of the second one. But... It's quite good. They've, they've done it well, the second one. I've not played the, the remaster of Nemesis yet, but 7 is just a totally different game. It's just pure survival horror. And like movies don't don't scare me. Like, oh, I'm a big man. Uh, nothing, like, I can watch a movie and I won't get a fright. I don't really get too tense. I scared, but see a video game, literally, like, a door could slam, and I am I am a mess. I am a shivering, quaking wreck, and Resident Evil does not help. Like, within the first three minutes, I'm like, I'm just going to turn this off and put the light back on. I, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I feel like it derailed us. Talking about Waterworld. But that is another thing about that movie is because, I mean, the story is Kevin Costner is a dick and he's got a boat. (laughs) And Dennis Hopper is a dick and he's got a boat. And in between, there are people. And over time, Kevin Costner finds himself caring more about people. And Dennis Hopper finds himself caring less about people. And then they find land. The end. But not really. I mean, the, there's, the, there's a yeah, lot in between. The moral of the story is if you in a boat, you're a dick. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> some cheesy lines for sure. Oh, what was when they're getting ready to jump off the boat? I'll breathe for both of us. <laughs> And I've sailed farther than most would ever dream is a thing I know <laughs> I've heard him say in this movie. Uh, before he takes her down in his little bubble to see the giant city that also has a ski slope. <laughs> but that's where he got his cool boots that he has at the beginning when uh, that really lionish type uh, haired spy for the smokers tries to take his ski boots he's like an he's an american brendan gleason <laughs> that's who he reminds me of i actually know who you're talking about uh, yeah. and bruce of course <laughs> best horror comedy of 2000 and whatever oh don't get me started on that <laughs> If yeah, Scott will never let that down. Go to Scott and Liam versus Evil. <laughs> what best horror top ten horror comedies episode? I, I, I think it, it was actually for the for Duncan's show. It was oh, for was it? yeah, it was for Teapots and 
way to do a top ten list of different kind of categories and Scots was horror comedies and obviously in that list was Stand By Me, which is obviously everyone who has knowledge and a brain <laughs> and eyes <laughs> knows that that's not a horror comedy. And then number one on the list was In Bruges, which again is not a horror. Uh, but yeah, that's if you want information like that, then definitely come over to Scotland vs. Evil because you'll get that in abundance. <laughs> I don't think I ever finished it, but I started a fake Netflix queue of horror comedies for Scott. It had like the Stanford Prison <laughs> Experiment movie. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't remember what uh, The Road. Uh, <laughs> of Schindler's things. List. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was in there. Yeah, it'll never, it'll never live it down. And rightfully so. It is an interesting statement to make. <laughs> That's for sure. And had he left off... He, had not, he hadn't left off Tucker and Dale versus Evil, right? That was on there? Uh, no, I think that was on there, but he had forgotten... He, I, Idle Hands was on there, but he hadn't actually ever finished watching it. Uh, and I can't think of anything else that he'd missed. What we do in the shadows? I don't think that was on it. But I could, I could be wrong. It was a few years ago, and, and yet we're still talking about it because it was a horrific statement to make. In Bruges is not a horror comedy. It stands out. <laughs> it definitely stands out. Much like I think the the trap that the smokers make with the all those dead bodies on strings like marionettes. When they're closing yeah. on Enola, and Kevin Costner goes to his... Is it still a periscope? Eh. Uh, because it looks under. Do you know what? I have never thought about that. I didn't think that was actually any information that I needed in my life until this very <laughs> second, but now, now I need to know. I'm sure it's got a name. I'm sure there's a name for it. How about <laughs> we take a quick break? We'll find out if there is a name for... And we will be back to talk about more Waterworld and whatever the fuck else comes to our minds because we are listening to the scientists and getting a little stir crazy. I think it would still be a periscope. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm just going to say that is that that is the fact. It is definitely called a periscope. An apparatus consisting of a tube attached to a set of mirrors or prisms by which an observer can see things that are otherwise out of sight. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah. All right. Like, just to, like, say hi, my name is... Um, you're listening to Scott and Liam versus Evil. Say that again. Scott. It's just introduce yourself. You're listening uh-huh. to Scott and Liam versus Scott Evil. and William versus Evil. Liam, Scott and William. Scott and William. William, like L-I-A-M. Am I not saying that? William? William. 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 Um, no, it's like just like... No, L I A M. Yeah. Liam. <laughs> Sorry, I am jet lagged. These lights are not helping. Uh, Scott and Liam versus Evil. Yeah. I'm so sorry. That's cool. Um, I thought you were spelling out the end of William. That's <laughs> okay, I got it now. Okay, ready? Yes. Hello, this is Amanda Fuller, and you are listening to Scott and Liam versus Evil. We aren't listening yet, but you should be. We are Scott and Liam versus Evil out of Glasgow, Scotland. In each episode, we take you on a drunken trip through the best, the worst, and the in-between picks from horror cinema. Well, at least we try to. You can find us online at scottandliamversusevil.com. So join us as we bear our souls everywhere good podcasts are available. Or the pub. We now return to your regular programming. Uh, what happens? See if you, if a raccoon gets in, how do you get rid of it? Like, you, obviously, you can't just get rid of it yourself. Like, you can't. I mean, you can because try. it's America, you can't just like like just throw a grenade at it or something. I mean, you can, especially in America. I think if uh, I think there's probably places in America where you can invite someone into your house and shoot them and be okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you can you you can uh, you can you can trap a raccoon if you like, if you if you can. It's I'm trying to think of what animals my cats or otherwise have brought into a house that I've lived in. You know, if there's a bat or a squirrel or a rabbit or a raccoon. So far, they haven't penetrated 
anywhere beyond the loft of my garage and yeah. possibly my attic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we actually called a guy to come go up there and look around and he found no signs of it. So if, if they are around the house, they're living in the roof. <laughs> Fucking, mm. It's like a horror movie, like the <laughs> three hold or two pigeons movie or whatever it's called over there. Uh, uh, freehold, freehold. I mean, you could. Have you seen the movie The Great Outdoors with John Candy and Dan Aykroyd? Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah. You could suit up like that and <laughs> battle a raccoon. Uh, they're less likely to have rabies as they s- seem to be rumored to be, but I, they do have other nasty shit. <laughs> Their mouths are dirty, but uh, yeah, you you could suit up and battle them, or you could call either the city or the county depending on where you are living and they've got people and there's also just businesses that deal with trapping raccoons uh, oh, i suppose you could always just leave it as well and it would be like wes anderson's fantastic mr fox and the raccoons are just living like a little happy family in your loft and everyone is having a good time yeah, as as long as basically <laughs> if you don't if you don't bother me, I won't bother you. Yeah. But if you if you take a shit on my jam room, we've got business. <laughs> so yeah, with the drums, are, are you are you just jamming yourself, or are you doing some solo stuff, or are you working on something, or is it just just jamming for the fun of it? it it's largely jamming for the fun of it and the exercise. I don't. Last time I went to the bike path. There were so many fucking people without masks on. I about had a panic attack and started screaming yeah. at people to stop being fucking stupid. So, <laughs> uh, so I've been working <laughs> most of my uh, exercise been around the house, and not that it really is is a risk of happening anytime soon. But I like to stay relatively up to speed because I used before we all went inside uh i would randomly get friends saying hey can you fill in for a show or two yeah uh and stuff like that but i we are in quarantine i have seen the memes about everybody check on your drummer friends because they've got a solo project that they're really working on right now (laughs) i do have an electric drum kit i do have a midi keyboard with a drum pad I haven't spent time, I promise, thinking about how before I started playing drums, I was the lead singer for a really short time of my first band. Uh, so I don't know what's going to come out of this, but I've, I've just been trying to put my frustrations out on things other than my family. <laughs> yeah. oh, you should definitely do it, man, because now's the better time than any. You're you're in lockdown, so do it. Yeah. So I I <laughs> I I, uh, I used to play the piano too. So if I brush up on that, I think uh, there's gonna be some weird shit coming out. And you already have a title for your first EP. Oh, the uh, piss uh, drinks, lemon theft, lemon. and two two drifters two. meet. That's the one. There you go. Success. Once once you remember the title, it's a success. Uh, do they have it's be, you know how how Dennis Hopper has all the the big words and the feudal gestures to all the people that have been following him hoping for a better life and he just gives them flyovers basically like the water world version of flyovers. Do you have Military fly flyovers going on over there, and, and salute to doctors and nurses. And Not stuff. flyovers. We have uh, every Thursday night, I think it is, at like eight o'clock. Uh, everyone stands at the front door and claps and bangs pots and pans, and like some companies are driving around with their lights flashing, but we've not had any flyovers or anything. They do something similar to that, at least in New York. We well, we've got. The military flyover here in America, as you would expect, a a, com- a country, I almost said company, but that's <laughs> kind of the same thing, um, that has a almost $700 billion military budget every year. Um, 
they've as a, a salute and you know uh, as as my dad always said protest the war not the warrior so this isn't about specific people in the military this is an idea mm-hmm. of the military that i'm talking about they've been doing these airplane flyovers that cost thousands and millions of dollars to do as their thank you to the healthcare workers and first responders and whatnot that are asking for medical supplies that cost yeah. money and I, I just wanted to ask you this this question. We're long enough into the episode that the people that lo- don't like to hear this show will have turned it off by now. <laughs> so here's probably the most political question of 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 the day. For one, what is sort of what what are how do you feel about that sort of thing of a aircraft flyover uh, as a way of saying thank you instead of other things? And uh, one of the things that I've just, heard quite a few times in defense of my opposition of that is they say well they have to do those flights anyway as part of their training and stuff so doesn't that make it an even assuming you think the same way i do doesn't that make that an even emptier gesture that they're doing something they were already going to do for some other reason and saying yeah. that it's their way of saying thank you. Yeah, that's. I, I think if the the military in the UK did a flyover every Thursday night, uh, it, people would be up in arms. That like that that just wouldn't ride at all. Uh, already, people have been trying to start petitions and stuff uh, in the UK where it's like Kickstarter campaigns to raise money for the NHS and the healthcare and it's like but we're raising money to pay for something that our taxes have already paid for the government have now got us thinking that what we should do is club together to pay for the healthcare that we've already paid for but because the government have fucked it up and it's so it's so insane errors and tenderics if they started fly like flying military planes over i think there would be riots in the street that seems so mad to me that the 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 government thing that's okay. Especially this one. I don't know if you heard that last Fourth of July, the original planned parade that Cheeto Mussolini wanted to have in D.C. He wanted to have tanks rolling down the streets and shit <sighs> for his Fourth of July parade for himself. And people were telling him, you know, that that it will destroy the streets, for one, having a <laughs> tank just driving down the street. And it will cost all this money, and it looks really bad and stuff. And it, it was going up until pretty soon when he was like, well, I've thought about it, and... Uh... <laughs> I don't, I don't want to waste that money on that. I want to spend it painting my wall black. Um, it sucks. I, and again, this isn't a very important point, but I really hope that that is not the impression that Americans give off. But I know it kind of is. Well, I don't know a whole lot. Of Americans, obviously yourself and a kind of handful of others, and I, I've never met any American at all who seems to spout the same nonsense that all these fanatics and stuff that you're seeing on TV do. Uh, like I've never seen that far. And when we went on our trip last year to the states uh, in the south, I, I I seen little hints of it. Uh, but it's the same as anywhere. You, you, you're you going to have bad apples. It's just sad that America has it on such a larger scale. But the good guys are still good guys. This is going to be a long fucking year, man. Uh, the presidential election is November 3rd. And they're already doing shit like... Uh... Well, I don't know if you saw, but the New York Democratic Party tried to cancel their primary to make it even less likely that Bernie Sanders got any more votes. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, a, a court said you can't do that, so it's back on. But people are... The the governor down in Georgia who ran the 
fucked up election that he ended up he was the uh secretary of state running for governor and the secretary of state oversees voting and you know precinct locations and all that other stuff and who's allowed to vote like who's on the voter rolls and stuff and who's current because they love kicking i saw a bunch of they tried to pull some voter id shit in the uk recently and i heard that got stamped down happily but america loves to have all these little stipulations about who's allowed to vote so but he was in charge of that and he narrowly won with some fucked up shit happening and i think he won by more or fewer people than he had thrown off the voting rolls and now as governor he said that they can't have the election for the uh, state supreme court which is the highest court in the state so he gets to appoint a person for two years. It's wow. It's crazy. And with all the it sucks, like all these people that hoarded all the guns just in case the government went crazy are loving it. And <sighs> I mean, there are regular people that are, you know, there are leftists and stuff that also are into guns. There's just it's just not such a fetishistic culture as the yeah. The uh, the other sort of mindset around it seems to have, but yeah, all the people that were hanging and burning Barack Obama in effigy saying that he was a dictator are just <laughs> loving this shit. It is, it's weird. It's, uh, it's kind of a broken <laughs> record and I'm sorry, but um, <laughs> it's, it's weird. So I'm staying healthy, well, so I get led into other countries. <laughs> we'll ha- we'll have you as soon as you can fly. We'll we'll give you room and board. <laughs> I've got a gold coin somewhere. Trade. What have we not said about Waterworld? By the way, because we are having a fun conversation. Uh-huh. Like we are getting away from Waterworld. <laughs> Dennis Hopper is just so good, and it, the the stunts are incredible. The it's it's actually so messy and so clumsy a film in places. Like the color of the water changes in every scene. Like there's no continuity, and yet by the end of it, you still feel like you have watched a giant blockbuster. The 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 holes that you can patch them all up with the adrenaline and. I just, I don't think there's anyone out there that hasn't seen Waterworld that's listening to this, obviously, but if you haven't, go and watch it. But watch it with my young boy eyes <laughs> when I first <laughs> watched it, because it's, it's definitely the nostalgia magic. I think maybe if I watched it as an adult for the first time, I'd maybe be like, man, that's a lot of shit. Like, what what is going on? But ha- having that kind of... Such a such a warm place for it back then. I can't I can't see past that. It's its own kind of. There's not going to be another movie like it. No. Unless James Cameron decides to redo Waterworld. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay for anyone to try and remake Waterworld, even if it's such a an absolute abysmal disappointment. I bet you it still captures the magic in the heart of the first one because they thought they were going to be amazing as well and in the grand scheme of things it wasn't if you look at it from an outsider's perspective yeah but you know I, and I was lo- I was looking and they didn't have I thought they lost money and I, I know movie budgets are their own weird kind of math but mm. they made their money back plus almost a hundred million dollars that sounds nice. Yeah. And a stunt show, which can then use the name and make more money for future years. Yeah, there were probably toys. I'm sure there, there were, were video toys. games. Yeah. Uh, it's some really pretty shots in this movie, especially when he's out on the water. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like when he's on the land, it's they make it feel confined. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. The kiss under water as well, like very the shape of the shape of water, where they're 
They're kissing and he's eating or he's breathing for her. Oh, that's a nice shot. Waterworld's fun. The world yeah, is getting bleached out and I mean, hopefully this the quarantining I saw that global emissions were down something like seventeen percent. Really? See? Every cloud is a silver lining. Yeah. Yeah, you know, global emissions are down. Or some other cool stuff. I I think the thing about dolphins swimming in the canals in Venice wasn't real, but you are seeing <laughs> more more animals in places. Yeah. I know Tank Girl, she still gets out on occasion. And there was a fucking massacre the other day. Oh, I, really? I went out onto the, the back deck and I found three animals. One of them might have just died of shock because I couldn't find any cat attack <laughs> markings on it. But it, it was brutal. I threw out my bath mat or my doormat. <laughs> just, oh man! Uh, it it was it was brutal. I'm glad I had dinner by then. I'll tell you. <sighs> oh, see, I could I couldn't let Boris out. I, I couldn't I couldn't picture that gentle little soul. Killing something. You know he would. I know a lot. I know. I know he's capable of it. But I just, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. He's, he's better off. Especially never having been out there. Yeah. He's got, he's got the good life. He's got an internet yeah. presence. Yeah, man. He's loving it. Fucking water world, man. We finally did it. We've been talking about it <laughs> since we've been talking. I know. It's a movie that can that, that transcends any issues, any any differences people can have, and you you can bond and become have a stronger, healthier relationship with Waterworld. It truly is cinema's medicine to everything. <laughs> I fucking love Waterworld, man. Oh, it's, it's so much fun. Like I watched it just before this. I watched it two weeks ago, and I'll probably watch it again tonight while I fall asleep, just because it's just, it's it's magic, man. It's so good. Love was put into this movie, and you can tell. Yeah. Yeah. And it, well, it's got something something like a 46% on Rotten Tom- Tomatoes. I almost said tomatoes, <laughs> but I knew you would know what I was saying. <laughs> Very posh, very posh. Tomatoes, <laughs> tomatoes, very posh. Tomatoes. Oh, speaking of tomatoes, uh, another thing you probably didn't say was the uh, the reality TV star that's in charge of the country went on off on a ramble today about guns and ta- uh, saying something about guns yeah. or farmers needing their guns to stop people from stealing their potatoes. <laughs> It was, it was so, you know, just a ramble, ramble, ramble. Oh, that Second Amendment. Gotta protect your potatoes or so, something, something. Oh, God. It, it was, I, it was so ridiculous that I wrote it down so I could look at it later. And he said, We're going after Virginia, uh, one of the original 13 colonies. Uh, he didn't say that course i think that might be one of the places where he said there were airports during the revolutionary war (laughs) but we're going after virginia they want to take your second amendment away you know that right you'll have nobody guarding your potatoes (laughs) that guy fucking said that on camera not even drunk in his office honestly man I just, I just don't understand it. Get me a little education on potatoes. <laughs> also, how good would that, how good would that film be? Just these mad raving lunatic zombies trying to get at your potatoes. I, I can't imagine <laughs> the weird shit that goes, goes on. I, I, it baffles me, and it's, I mean, presidents all suck. You know, there hasn't been a president that never did something really shitty, but I feel like he's trying really hard. Yeah. Fuck, what was that (laughs) movie? Somebody made a spoof of Halloween and some other horror movies 
but it was a guy in a mental hospital that dressed like Donald Trump and had a Donald Trump mask. And he right. went to a town and he was, you know, killing all the, the immigrants and stuff. Uh, I think the, the Laurie Strode type character was a Muslim. Uh, it's a really fucking weird movie. If you find it, send me it. Okay. It mm. was on Amazon Prime uh, when I watched it, but I, don't, I can't imagine it being there. But I'll be able to figure out at least what it was. might have been a student project, but it's about an hour and a half long or an hour and 15 minutes long, and I watched the whole thing. And if you think Donald Trump and racists suck... I like horror movies, you'll enjoy whatever the fuck that was called. <laughs> we are trapped on our own boats, man, but uh, I feel like, well, we're we're no longer strangers, but we exchanged something tonight. Yeah. We are, we are drifters. We don't have to be strangers, because it's drifters. I would let you drink from my pussy cup. <laughs> you can suck on my limes. You guys say you can suck on my tomatoes. My tomatoes. tomatoes. <laughs> Some tomatoes and herbs. <laughs> which just sounds horrible in an American accent. That's why we, nobody says it. Herbs. 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 <laughs> Eddie Izzard said. Because there's a fucking H in it. <laughs> um, but there's no H in Waterworld. There is no H in Liam. <laughs> No H and Darren. Local H was a good band, by my recollection. I'll stay off the H, unless your name's William Burroughs. What you got coming up on uh, Scott and Liam versus Evil? Oh man, I don't have a clue. <laughs> Scott, Scott is a an, a kind of mental health nurse, uh, so he's obviously in the front line just now, and his shifts are all over the place. Uh, so, like, from kind of day to day, he never knows when he'll be working or which hospital he might be working at. So, our scheduling is kind of over the place. So, we've released an episode last week. We we're meant to have one coming up next week, but we'll just kind of play it by ear until this all gets done and we get back to a kind of bit of normality. Yeah, but it's still fun. It's still fun to come over and chat and listen to old episodes and hear two people that know absolutely nothing about cinema talk about cinema yeah and, and you've you've got a poll going at least in your facebook group if not twitter yeah. and elsewhere now these are movies that one of you hasn't seen before no it, it, we literally said what do you think we should do and scott said uh oh shit what was the first one he picked i can't even remember now it was a wild rose Oh yeah, sorry, my cousin Vinny. He just said my cousin Vinny and then True Romance and I was like, Alright, so we just pick just random movies that aren't horrors. <laughs> and then we did and we just threw it up and it turns out that everybody loves my cousin Vinny and everybody loves the running man. And I, I, I don't I think everyone's forgotten that the polls just for like what we're gonna talk about in the episodes. So they're all fighting amongst themselves about what movie they want to watch. It's like you can watch all of them. You don't have to watch what the poll tells you to watch. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're slowly turning the Facebook group into the actual cult that I've been trying to kind of get it into for years. Oh, they can, they can uh, maybe you can siphon off some of the people that never did anything at Storm Area 51 or whatever that Scott was trying to get going. <laughs> oh, I've yeah. been trying to think of what movie's going to not piss him off and stop letting people vote. <laughs> He is, he's, he's genuinely getting wound up about it behind the scenes because people keep picking movies that, that he's not enjoying. And yet, I think all the picks have been great. I'm, I'm willing to give the, the listeners the, the choice for the next the next 10 episodes, but uh, I think we'll, we'll be lucky if we get one more out of Scott, especially after the last episode, which was Dead Snow, which does not hold up on a rewatch. And it's subtitles, and we know how yeah. Scott feels about that. Although it reveals in that episode for the first time in a hundred and whatever it is that he actually he appreciates sub- subtitled movies because he knows that if they've if they're now in front of him they've came a long way and it means it's because they're good. 
like you can get so many shitty American or British films because like we're flooded with them but the subtitle movies if they get to our screens it's because they're good and I was like I can't believe you've realised that it's like he's a beautiful flower blossoming (laughs) (laughs) into this man with a love for cinema and it's it's really truly beautiful beautiful to see and everyone should join us and watch the flower grow that is Scott (laughs) It's, it's a good time I finally got him over here uh, to talk about the one of the movies you said is not better than Waterworld, The Road Warrior, <laughs> or Mad Max 2, depending on where you live. Waterworld. <laughs> I, yeah, I like this movie. I know it's got its faults, but we don't rate movies over here for a reason. We, we talk about movies and things that we just want to talk about. And... Although we do try to get the guest to do the little proverb or bit of wisdom for these times or that are timeless if water world teaches you something that you need to leave this conversation thinking about what what would it be filter your pee yeah no matter what happens during this pandemic always remember that you can always piss into a cup drink it and give a little to your lime stock up on paper although i guess nowadays it's toilet paper if that yeah I haven't, I haven't checked but uh put some dirt in jars just in case although if people stay quarantining the environment might thank us for it yeah otherwise get yourself a giant monster fish man girdle like kevin costner has in this or maybe it's light body armor remember a mask is for other people not necessarily yourself and don't forget to duck and cover You win.